<laughs> Hi guys, I am Keisha Boyd with Mocha in the Morning. Your host. This is my co-host, officially Jorge. Hola chica. Hola. Si quieres. Oh, si, si, si. Gracias. Gracias. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to Mocha in the Morning, where we're adding a lot of flavor to your morning blend. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Um, we have a lot of great things to talk about. How was your week? It's been fabulous. Great. You know, I just got back from the Bahamas. Oh, nice. It always seems like I was getting back from somewhere. I know. <laughs> But as always, I'm coming back with some steamers for you. Ooh, mm -hmm. what? Oh, but first, coffee. All right, we're back. We have some steamers. Yes, we do. That are whew, heavy though. Super heavy. It just seems like a lot of things are just always so heavy. heavy it is, especially man. this. Yeah. Um, we're just now getting into hurricane season. Yeah. Right. And of course, for us Floridians, we're kind of like in a panic. Yeah. But not only for us Floridians, but also for our brothers and sisters in the Caribbean. For instance. Puerto Rico. Yeah. So there was a Harvard study. Mm -hmm. uh, these scientists from Harvard led the study. C turns out that um, we're talking about 4,645 deaths. Wow. Because of Hurricane Maria. Now you know that officially mm -hmm. that's not the count. Yeah. Which is absolutely insane it is and i just think this situation is only going to get worse there's even you know we're going to bring on um seely oh, one of our favorite bloggers yeah um, from my mommy blog and um uh because she's uh, out of or the central florida area yeah and there's a new thread coming out in regards to this particular steamer yeah yes there is and i'm glad to have for you guys to have me here again this week um but we just saw earlier today that um, we have a new hashtag on Twitter, 4645 Boricuas, which kind of brings to light the fact that almost 5,000 lives are, were lost um, during the hurricane, as a, well as a result of the hurricane. And uh, there is a very moving thread that goes through and actually shows you pictures of all the people that were lost. And it's very wow. impactful, um, especially as, like you, you said, you know, we're right here. So hurricane season is about to start. And we're just now getting this devastating news about the actual loss that we suffered last year. Yeah, so it's just, it's absolutely, I know we're gonna hear a lot more from this. Right. I mean, it started last week with, mm -hmm. you know, that uh, the, the, the gentleman running for, John Ward running for, for, uh, yeah, for his official, yeah, yeah, it's a for office, yeah. and saying those things about Puerto you know, the Puerto Ricans that yeah. left and uh, now back in the news. And it really is tragic. It, it is. really is tragic. And uh, we need to, I mean, let's get on that on that thread and, yeah. you know, keep, you know, Puerto Rico se, uh, se levanta. Se levanta. Right? Yes, thank you. Forced, forced, oh, that's, I mean, that's people. just documented. Yeah. Which is even yeah. more. Uh, well, and speaking of uh, documented, or I know, undocumented, undocumented. <laughs> and I'm glad that we have Celie here. Um, you know, there was the hashtag mm -hmm. uh, started, um, where are the children? Yes. Because a lot of people were concerned yeah. about this new policy with this particular administration mm -hmm. and separating families. Right. But there's been some major confusion about that. But the real tea is, go ahead, Seely. <laughs> So, you know, the realty is we, we heard about the 1500 children um, following that it was, uh, you know, kind of blew up on Twitter on Saturday. We really started looking at the fact that uh, those children aren't necessarily lost. Uh, those children were placed with, you know, sponsored families. Some of those families are not documented. And as you can imagine, during this administration, you know, it's difficult for people to actually, you know, pick up the phone when they know it's someone from ICE on the other line. So. The kids aren't necessarily missing. A lot of times these kids don't want to be found because they are with other family members or, that are undocumented. The big T in the story is the fact that 
you know, we just had the legislation that passed that basically calls for children to be separated from the families when they get to the border. And so because of that, you know, the hashtag has kind of shifted a little bit to hashtag families belong together. And there are a ton of organizations participating in a day of action today across the country. I think I have 12 major cities listed um, with cities, you know, smaller cities all around the country um, joining in really to bring to light the inhumane treatment of, you know, the, the children in the detention centers and of course of separating, separating families. And, you know, I think a lot of us always think about the fact that this isn't what we want for this country, but it's certainly something that we've seen in the past with families being separated. So um, what I think it's is crazy is how, I don't know how, all of a sudden when we speak about immigration, right. we only think about, or not we, but uh, it seems that the conversation only seems to be about people of color. Like, I wonder if I, if right. someone immigrated from like Norway, they would Correct. take away their little, exactly. their little latte away from them. them. I don't right, know. and separate them from their yeah, family. Yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely. It's always the people of color. It's not a European thing, but that's nothing new. That's crazy. Which and thank crazy. you, uh, Josie uh, Duffy Rice, yes. uh, who uh, started that also, um, t t clarifying that mm -hmm. situation. Because it's so easily to, it's so easy to kind of invest in yeah. these movements and then and to then find, not know. And then not know the real situation. You got to pump your brakes. So I'm glad. Thank you, girl, for the looking at Miss Steely girl. Yes. Because <laughs> we're glad you're on top of it because we want to make sure that. Well, our viewers correct don't get it twisted that's right because next thing you know like dum, dum, dum. correct like, right <laughs> right so, next so. all right so we'll keep that up we are going to move on with our piping hot segment which is brought to you by the portico take a look mocha in the morning is brought to you in part by the Portico Cafe, where conversation, connection, and community create change. All right, so Yay, this is our piping hot. hot segment, where we talk about all the hottest news and things that are going on that are sizzling hot. Up first, we have ourselves a real live... Spider-Man, Spider 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 right? Spider -Man. So Does this man, Mama, is it Mama? Mama Duga Sama. Mama Duga Sama, <laughs> okay, is like a real live hero. He what is going did on? Did he save this kid from the... Look, he did some American Ninja Warrior, oh, man. like Donkey Kong, Mario <laughs> Brothers, you know how, like, this, like, pop, 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 pop. I was like, did right? you not see that? Let, let me show you the video. Yes, let, take we'll a look. show you the video. Basically, Seely was hanging off that, you know, balcony on purpose. <laughs> Ooh, girl. Because she spotted him and uh -huh. she was like, Come get me. <laughs> Stay. I'm going to need you to not tell my life. I'm going to need you to <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How amazing was that? Oh, my God. I, I was, you know, I was like holding my breath the first time I saw it because you, you just know that something's going to happen. Some, you know, it, it, it was just. I don't know, amazing is, is like an understatement. Um, but the realty is what's going to happen to that man who let that baby fall off the balcony? Right. Right. Well, who knows what they're going to do. But at least what I thought was really cool is that President Macron, one of our favorites, mm -hmm. um, honored him and with French citizenship, Awesome. Bam. And a job as a fireman. I love it. Right? That's how you tell somebody thank you. That's how you tell somebody yeah. thank you. Wow. I just love the fact that, like, wow, just out of nowhere we have this. I mean, it, it was just a fabulous So story. he's now Spider-Man of the 18th. You got it. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, moving on. More superheroes. Yes. The greatest <laughs> of all time. 
our girl, we always talk about her because she's just I know. a boss. <laughs> right. Miss Serena Williams. Yes, ma'am. Did you see that cat suit, honey? <gasps> Yeah, you know me. I know you. you know me. I have a closet <laughs> full of onesies, jumpsuits. I, I'm like, but when I saw that, that, oh yes, I was like, she did that. Yes, and she's so fine. I was like, and, and she won. I was like, Seely, listen, let's talk about this. You're a mom. I'm a mom. Listen, and we know how hard it is to get that snap back once you have a baby, honey. Serena is doing it. No, I have already. I have already told y'all. I told Courtney <laughs> that I might have to get pregnant, <laughs> have a baby, just so I can rock the cat suit. I mean, Listen. it was also also you guys are the official baby sponsor, unofficial baby sponsor, since y'all were the ones that brought it up. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was amazing. I mean, you know what I loved is the fact that there was all this hoopla and drama about the fact that, you know, what she was seated because she went on maternity leave and we all know that how unfair that was. Right. And so for her to just kind of show up and be like, boom. Right. Here it is. What you got? Uh -huh. It was just a I know I, it, everyone. It was a, it was a big, was it was a big boom because like you could just hear the people in the audience like, <gasps> and it was like stunning. And she went out there, went to work, did her job, and it was a wrap. That's right. And then she, you know, of course, she gave credit to the moms yep. who are out there doing their thing, being fierce. Wakanda is. I'm yes. telling you, she knows how to read a moment, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and she dives in on the deep end. Yeah. Because whether it's a positive thing or whether it's uh, because of some dumbass statement yeah. some dude says somewhere in the world, right. she knows exactly what to say, when to say it, and what to wear. And what to wear, when most importantly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Miss Serena. Now, let's jump over uh, to The villainous. Oh, I'm just so, just, oh. Okay, so... ABC, first of all, hashtag Channing, okay, <laughs> who is a boss for real. She is the head of entertainment at ABC, a black woman. Um, pulled the plug on Roseanne's mm -hmm. show, The Revival of Roseanne. And behind the racist tweets about Valerie Jarrett, um, saying that she was like an offspring of Planet of the Apes and the and Muslim, Muslim brotherhood, yeah, brother, brotherhood. Right? And so... What? And then and then she had the nerve to blame it on like Ambien and they came back and was like, Oh no ma'am. You <laughs> didn't not... love that though. Then you don't just love like, well, just so you know. Just uh, so you know. No. <laughs> it was like this. Ambien did one of these. Like, mm mm. Right. Mm -mm. <laughs> no ma'am. That, that, yes. that, that was, that was a clap back. That was Probably the most clever thing anyone in corporate America has ever, ever done. Yes. <laughs> so sorry. Yeah. Racism is not. I'm gonna get a t-shirt. I'm gonna get a t-shirt. Hello. Racism but listen, it's not a side effect. Not a side effect. Our our um commentator Kia is not here with us today, but she had plenty to yeah, say about been. this. Go ahead and take a look. I'm just gonna put it out there. Yeah, Roseanne's racist. Whatever. Fine. But I feel like this whole fallout situation and everything that's going on is really ABC's fault. It's your fault, um, ABC. And I really want people to drop that in my comments and let me know what they think. But Roseanne's been racist and anti-Semitic. This has been going on for the past 10 years. So the fact that now ABC's acting like, oh, her thoughts are so abhorrent and what she said was horrible and racist does not support our views. But you brought her show back even though knowing she had done some of these tweets and comments and videos and pictures already. ABC, she's never lied about what she did. She she didn't. Um, what was that? Maybe five years ago, she actually um, took a picture of her dressed as Hitler with with gingerbread Jewish cookies going into the oven. And for those of you who don't know why that's bad, um, Hitler put Jews in concentration camps and put them in ovens and gas chambers and killed them. And that's kind of what she was mocking. And there's one thing to have satire, there's a whole other thing to be racist and anti-Semitic. And it, it is, the whole situation to me is just crazy. I will even go one step further. Roseanne, you're saying that the show was canceled because you're a Trump supporter? No, that's why the show got a second season because you were a Trump supporter. Trump supporters liked you. People like the fact that you showed a middle American family who's suffering through the same thing a lot of other people are suffering from, unemployment, 
you know, kids moving back home. The, it's what a lot of people are dealing with in middle America. And that's why people liked you. That's why it brought in 18 million views. The only reason Roseanne the show got canceled is because of your, your comment. But again, like I keep saying, the show should have never got brought, got brought back. It just shouldn't have. If they're going to base it on that she doesn't express the values and views of ABC. All right, so the thing is, you know, always Kia. Oh, yes. Kia has to always have um, alternative perspectives. Yes, she does. <laughs> and we love we that. We love that, yes. But she's absolutely right. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that sometimes, you know, when you're in that corporate culture, mm -hmm. sometimes it's you can't just do things cold turkey. Yeah. You know, so I think maybe there was some background planning to handle the situation and then the opportunity presented itself because I truly don't think it was like an overnight decision to do it. Mm -hmm. And I think there were other factors maybe that we don't know about yeah. that eventually led to this. But this is what I tell people. This is why it's so important why people of color mm -hmm. and especially women right. need to be in these positions of, of leadership. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and authority because what happens is you can change the way that we treat each other and how we behave our right everything yeah. it can change everything had it been a white dude up by disney doing that thing roseanne would have been renewed for another season and they would have gave us a watered down uh statement about why this and why that mm -mm. Would have told, yeah. told us that they sent her to uh, some sensitivity training, right. or, you know, all of that fun stuff. You know how that goes. You know, and it's you know. It, it, it's really sad though because her negligence and her insensitivity caused a whole cast and crew of people to be jobless. Yeah, it was just so selfish. Yeah, Wanda Sykes is one of the producers. Oh yeah, Wanda Sykes. She pulled the plug before the they daughter's even pulled a lesbian. The plug. You know, whatever. Look, Mickey Mouse said not. In his house. Not in his house. Not today, <laughs> not, not tomorrow. Your three days are out. Hello. <laughs> Get All right, moving on. Kendrick Lamar. Another one who says no. No, thank you. Mm -hmm. So Kendrick was having this live concert, which, of course, I'm sure it's full of energy. Everybody's in the moment. He calls up a fan who happens to be Caucasian um, to sing parts of the of the song with yeah, him. I love that. Now, the problem was the N word was dropped in there a few times in the in the chorus alone. He uses the N word. Okay, so we're not talking about her the choreography cuz I was like, "Oh, no, not her choreography. That's a whole nother story." <laughs> we're talking about the lyrics. Now, she thought it was okay for her to use the N word. And Kendrick was like, er. "Hold on." And we got it on tape. Take a look. <laughs> Make some noise for the lady right now. Yes, the lady, man. She said, where well, we started at. I told you every time. Swear I got you. I will see clips. Oh, I got along. They probably got me down by the end of the song. Seem like the whole city go against me. Every time I'm in the street, I hear yeah, 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 yeah. Waiting for you. Waiting for you. Waiting for you. Waiting for you. Waiting Hey, how do you feel about this? Okay, we were just having this conversation mm -hmm. on set the other day about because your times are different. Yeah, your you know everyone's vernacular is different, mm -hmm. and some words are just not as powerful, or sometimes they change their meaning, or yeah. they have no relevance to you, or they mean something different. And so I was like, okay, for real, let's go in on this. I want to know, like, when's it okay? Because, of course, some people are going to be like, oh, well, you say it. This person says it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't say it. And I got the most amazing, eye-opening, simple 
answer. Which was? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not my producer talking. Um, Shelly, what, what was the answer? You don't have that experience, so that word is not a part of your experience. Therefore, don't use it. That's there it I is. was like, Ding. yeah. It, it could be just that simple. Celie, what do you think? Same thing. It's all about lived experience, and you know we we talk about it a lot, and it's it's just that's what it boils down to. Um, that's not your lived experience. You don't get to say that. Um, you know, and I've been in circles where that word maybe has been dropped because someone feels comfortable because it's Correct. in, mm -hmm. you know, it's in, uh, well, it's in the song and, you know, like you get throat chopped equally if you say right. that and have that job experience. I mean, right. That's, that's just kind of how it goes. Right. I just keep saying that her. Throat chop. It's, I, it's throat, 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 throat chop. Yes. Yeah. I'll throat chop somebody now, but it is about the lived experience. <laughs> and I think that we, we've lost that a little bit. Yeah. Um, we, we tend to forget that, but yeah, that well, was a perfect. Well, what you did not lose was your lipstick, girl, because I'm, <laughs> I'm just watching your mouth. Listen, I just remember last time I was here, he came with it. I was like, I can't just be, you know, I can't just tone this down because. Mm -mm. <laughs> did I set a lip stanza? <laughs> girl, listen, I, I have to like go out and, and do some lipstick shopping now just for the show. I'm okay with that, though. I'm okay with that. All right. So speaking of lips, and now they're all up in our fields. Yes. <laughs> it seems that 175,000 Starbucks employees had some sensitive tea training. Okay. So Starbucks closed their stores for racial bias training um, amid the Philadelphia. Um, you know, situation with the two young men being arrested or detained. And so, you know, I mean, how do you feel? Do you feel like this was worth it? Do you think that it was effective for them? I think? think anything that can lead us into the dialogue mm -hmm. um, in regards to race and racism in our country, like... It may have not been a great, you know, uh, class or maybe these people are getting it. But anything that can lead to dialogue when it comes to race relations, I'm all about, you know. And um, I just don't understand why Starbucks, you would think they're like such like progressive thinking company. Like, how is this not already a part of your like employee, like one-on-one training? -on -one, well, you know what? Like, training? It's, 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 <laughs> I don't think it is for many companies, quite honestly. <laughs> I just don't think that they thought that we would even need this you know uh, you understand like yeah. this it's like it's not need it's like your lawyer you have them but you don't you know you need them until you don't need them till you need them True. or your insurance you know right, so right, i just right. think it's it's it may be a forefront like forefront now of thinking and included in your like onboarding mm -hmm. but i don't think that it was thought about before That's i crazy. just don't i think that you know, Celia, you can jump in and tell us your thoughts too. Yeah, I think this is the same as what Jorge was saying earlier about a seat at the table, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't have someone that's at the table that understands that you need to have cultural competency training, it's not going to happen. Um, and also, you know, I'm glad they did this for, you know, whatever the little PR measurements were. But this type of training, it doesn't happen in one day. So what I'm interested to know is what's the follow up? And like you said, is this going to be part of the onboarding? But also there has to be continual training in this because people tend to fall back into their old habits and they need to be mindful of this constantly. Again, if they don't know it and they don't live it, live it then it's difficult for them to actually identify with it. So, yeah. Especially now yeah. with this uh, hostile political climate yes. that we have. I think as hard as we're going on that side, mm -hmm. then on the flip, we need to go as hard and harder right. on the on the flip side. Correct. I think. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So black girl magic, black woman magic continues. Black, 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 black. Black, black. <laughs> Again. So, speaking of. Speaking of, the Honorable Mia Motley was sworn in as the Prime Minister of Barbados. Yes. Tell us about that. As the new Motley crew <laughs> on the island. <laughs> Absolutely. That's super, super 
exciting to that fabulous island nation yes. that of course gifted us Riri mm -hmm. amongst yes. other fabulous things. So um, again, like I said before, when anyone of color and especially a woman is in a position of power and authority, that right there uh, creates change. Absolutely. How happy are you about it? <laughs> Listen, I, I actually saw it from from uh, Riri's Instagram page, and I just got giddy to even see her um, celebrating it. It was such, you know, warm kind of warm and fuzzy to be able awesome. to see that. And um, I'm just excited. Listen, I I'm just excited for any and every black woman that is running this year across the I would say that's across right. the country, but I really mean across the world. That's right. I'm just excited for every one of them that's going to be winning this year. That's right. She better do it. All right. So I cannot wait to visit her island nation. I know. <laughs> uh, road trip. Hey, In yeah, road, trip. <laughs> road trip. Boat <laughs> trip. Boat <laughs> trip. So listen. Um, location. We are going to round out our piping hot with Queen Sugar. Now, it's one of my favorite shows, and it's back on OWN, which I love what Oprah's doing with OWN because she is clearly. And, rem and remember when uh, Oprah's never going to make it? Right. And she was on that struggle. Listen, but she went and sat, she sat underneath that tree Hello. at her house and said, I'm not moving from this tree until I know the tea. Listen. And I'm like, can I get a seat under that tree? I, tea? Right? <laughs> Listen, that Listen. comeback was real. Yes, yes. But you know what? So Queen Sugar, it goes along with the you know your, the signature blend you'll see later. Um, it 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 talks about things that we deal with and it's so relatable, um, like many other shows. But the the season premiere talked about you know and showed fear um, and why we don't go after our our dreams and and understanding that when it's your time. Live in your time and mm -hmm. go after what you want to go after. Mm -hmm. And I think that the things that we've talked about today, the women going after these political seats, um, these these powerful positions, these leadership positions, and these companies like a ABC, like it's 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 our time to do what mm -hmm. we need to do mm -hmm. to make sure that our future is bright. And it's not going to be an easy road, but it's going to be worth the you know worth mm -hmm. worth it. And so I'm so excited about Ava DuVernay and how she writes this and her team and how they portray um, these characters on Oscar Well, I saw Sugar. a quote that simply stated um, that this is like one of the first uh, shows that actually portrays black people just being. Just being. You know, there's, you know just being who they are and, and what they are and what they do, their lives, their families. And I, I found that to be a very powerful like statement because, mm -hmm. you know, it's like just be, you know, and the way that they're able to capture those moments, you know, lets you know that everyone is, you know, pretty much on the same life struggle, same life's ups and downs. You know, it's just all the other stuff that we create. Correct. That, that disrupts us and make us different. Do you watch that program, Celie? I haven't started. It's on my list. Um, I definitely will be binge watching it this summer, uh, but just definitely what you all said. And the idea that, you know, it's not, it's not a slave story. It's not a story about the civil rights, right? We talk about, you know, images and what we see on TV and, you know, kind of all around us. And it goes back to humanizing black people, right? And knowing that we have those experiences, that it's, you know, we have, probably have a lot more in common than most people think because everyone's human. And we all have these experiences. And we all have family and we all have drama, right? Um, so that's the one thing that I'm excited about for this show is that it just shows us being ourselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that we'll see more of that. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, all of the Queen Sugar season and other shows that they have. Um, coming out to represent us even more in a positive way. I might even use that as my new nickname. Really? <laughs> Queen Sugar. Oh my gosh. I'm going to get you a t-shirt. I'm going to get you a t-shirt. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Ms. Seeley, for joining us again this week. Yes. Make sure you subscribe to her blog, My, my Mommy Hood. You are so fabulous. Yes, you are. <laughs> it's been a Thank great, great, great me. time having you.
And we'll be right thank back. You. I really had quite so much fun here. I, I, I just love it here. So thank you guys for having me. All you right. right. <laughs> and we'll be right back after this. You are watching Mocha in the mm -hmm. morning. And flavor. Oh, at the flavor. At the flavor. <laughs> to your morning blend. <laughs> This segment is brought to you by BlackInTheBay.com, your online connection to everything that's Black in the Bay. Log on now for news, updates, and events. And thank you for tuning in and staying with us. Up next is our signature blend. And we're talking about being a boss in this day and age and not allowing fear to cripple your dreams. If you see my shirt, it says boss. It takes hustle and heart to do what you truly love. Take a look. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun? Or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat? Or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load. Or does it explode? Why do you believe people don't follow their passions and dreams? It can be a myriad of reasons, but fear is the main one. It is believed and has been said that fear will kill many more dreams than failure ever will. This is true because in order to experience failure, you must get over the fear of at least trying. Here are a few other things that may be holding you back. Your past. You must release yourself of your past experiences and look ahead to the future possibilities. Uncertainty. Living out your dreams can be very nerve-wracking and things change rapidly. You're encouraged to plan and prepare, especially financially, so that you're able to make sound decisions. Fear of success. Fear of failure is one part, but fear of success is just as bad. You are afraid that you might actually become the rock star that you imagine. Now what? Don't let that stop you. Go be great. Toxic circles. If the people in your life aren't for you, then they're against you, point blank. Surround yourself with those who genuinely love you. Work ethic. You must put in the work and earn your spot. Some can buy their way up, but most of us have to give blood, sweat, and tears. You got to go hard or go home. Now, don't be afraid to follow your dreams and be the best you that you can possibly be. I'd hope you'd rather experience failure from giving it your very best shot the not knowing at all because you never tried. Thank you for watching Mocha in the morning. Hey, listen, if you have a Mocha moment, make sure to Facebook us, Instagram us, tweet us at Mocha Morning Show. Now check out this week's Mocha moment. Look at that. Little boy's still helping little old ladies. That's so cute. Holla to Atlanta. Thank you for tuning in this week to Mocha in the Morning, where we're always adding a little flavor to your morning blend. I am your host, Keisha Boy, and my co-host, officially Jorge, my Cafe Con Leche. Thank you, Miss Seely, as well, our commentator. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks for joining. Have a fabulous weekend. Bye. -bye.